In Uganda's capital Kampala, opposition protesters marched over the alleged kidnapping of their colleagues by state security forces. This demonstration in November was dispersed by security agents and the military. Fast forward three months and the Ugandan government is closing the United Nations local human rights office. Set up in 2006, it's documented widespread rights violations, including torture, illegal detentions and failure by the state to prosecute offenders. Authorities say the UN's presence is no longer needed. Critics of President Yoweri Museveni, who's been in power since 1986, say the move highlights Uganda's worsening record on civil liberties. We think that the regime in Uganda should be isolated by all democracy-seeking people, by all people that have respect for human rights, democracy and the rule of law. Opposition leader Bobby Wine was repeatedly arrested during campaigning for an election in January 2021. Security forces regularly dispersed his rallies using tear gas, rubber bullets, beatings and detentions. We cannot resign to slavery in our own country. But it's also unfortunate that such violations have not received enough international condemnation. In a letter last week to the UN Human Rights Commissioner, Uganda said it would not renew the office's mandate, effectively expelling the rights monitors. According to the letter, that's because of the progress Uganda has made in developing domestic capacity to monitor human rights compliance, including the emergence of a strong civil society. But Dr Livingston Saranyana, who heads the Uganda Human Rights Foundation, said there are sharp contradictions in the government's argument. For the last couple of years, we are aware that Uganda's civil society has been weakening. The civic space has been... Uh, has been shrinking. Uganda's State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Okelo Oriem, said the UN Rights Office had come to Uganda to monitor rights violations during a war in the country's north that ended nearly two decades ago. Now that war is finished, he said, there's no more relevance of that office. The Office of the UN's High Commissioner for Human Rights declined to comment on the government's decision.